Hey everyone, it's uh, John the Pool Expert again. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to um, hook up a Superflow VS pump to your uh, Easy Touch panel. Uh, it's different than attaching a regular IntelliFlow VS because the wiring is different and in fact you can actually hook this to any um, automated panel that uses relays. Um, so I'm going to be going over that with you um, right now. First thing you need to get is the cord. Um, this cord is different than the one for the IntelliFlow. Um, so you have to order it separately. It doesn't come with the pump. So um, that's your part number. Um, if you can screenshot that, you can save that if you need to take it down to your local pool supply place and pick it up. So, uh, and, and the good thing is you can you can actually attach this to any brand uh, panel. You can hook it to a Jandy um, if you need to, or Hayward. Um, it would actually work with that. So, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this in. Uh, it kind of only goes one way, and it just slides in, and then you you tighten it up, and then. Uh, what we're going to want to do is I'm going to zip tie it to uh, all these other flex lines so it looks nice and clean and come up right into the easy touch box and then I'll show you how to hook that up okay so unlike um, other low voltage wires um, like you see over here um, this is normally where you run all the low voltage uh, communication wires and uh, that's to keep them from interfering with the high voltage that's on this part of the box. Um, but unlike that, you need to run this into the high voltage side of the box. Um, so I'm gonna just run it up and, and cut it so it's gonna be long enough to reach the relays. And then um, I'll show you how to hook it up to the relays. Okay, on these wires, um, what we have is we have a five volt wire, which is the red one that feeds everything. So that has to go to each relay on the line side of the relay. So that could be jumped from each one. And then what we have is ground. And in this case, um, we don't need to attach the ground to anything. Um, that's actually if you use a, a separate five volt power source to run everything. And then we have our four other wires which each one represents a different speed. And um, I'm gonna do speeds three and four today. So I'm only just, I'm only gonna run two, two speeds on this pump because um, all my other uh, relays are full, all my functions are full. So I'm only gonna do uh, waterfall and waterfall high um, on this. So I'm just gonna be using speeds three and four, which are, uh, orange and brown but um, you can run a relay to each one but you got to remember each one takes up a full function on an easy touch so each one is going to take up one of these so the more you do the more spots you have to have filled up so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the red wire and then, and then I'm going to show you how that uh, gets landed on the relays uh, so you guys can check that out okay so what I've done is I've, I've run the red wire up to the first relay and then I jumpered it for the next relay and then all I have to do is hook uh, the brown one to one of these and the um, the orange one to the other one and so that's going to be speed three and speed four um, and it doesn't really matter which one you know because I can always unplug the relay in the back of the board and, and, and um, assign it to whichever whichever button I want so I'll go ahead and hook up the other colors. Okay, so as you can see, we're all hooked up. Um, the red is our jumper. Um, the brown and the orange ones are the speeds. And then also don't forget the pump itself gets hooked up directly to a breaker. And uh, we are using a ground fault um, GFCI breaker uh, for safety. And also they require that in the state of California. So 
Anyway, it's all hooked up. I'm just going to set it up at the pump end right now. Also, um, the wires that we are not using, we're going to tape off or a wire nut off um, so they don't touch anything important. Okay, the next thing you want to do on this is to set it up for the external control. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, it's all hooked up, both ends. I'm just going to hold down the start stop button until the light for external control comes on. Once that comes on, I'm just going to hit the start stop button and it's ready to go. Okay, so now everything's on. The only other thing I would suggest is to turn, turn the priming function off because um, it's going to come on whatever the priming speed is which can be anything from uh, 3450 all the way down to 1700 um, I'm going to turn that feature off right now it's set for 2300 but it's going to go for four minutes or five minutes so um, in order to turn that off I'm just going to hold the down button on while it's trying to prime until it says off and then now it's only going to come on the speeds you set it for. And then you don't have to worry about that.